All right. Welcome, everybody, to Money Moves Sundays. I'm your host, J-Rock. It is February the 2nd, the start of a new month in 2020. It feels like we're five months in to 2020, and we're only starting February. Some of you feel like it's been a long, rough ride just that first month. But hey, we've got a lot of things to cover today, and I'm going to cram it in in about 20 to 30 short minutes and fill you up with some information, get you ready and on your way to watch the Super Bowl and watch those Kansas City Chiefs knock off the San Francisco 49ers. So let's get right to it. We are going to look at the news, forexfactory.com. And actually, let me share one thing real quick while I'm thinking about it. And then I will go right to it. Come on, give me it. Slow share. All right. So here we go. As you know, or may not know, we just had a major vote that took place a couple of days ago and Britain left the EU. And what is that going to do for their currency? Whoa, man. Don't even have an idea, but we're going to find out in about 50 minutes when that market opens. And we're going to see where it gets to kingdom come or down to Hades. But we shall see what the effect that will have. We know that the markets rallied the last couple of trading sessions and would not stop. Went up 700 plus pips. We'll look at that in a minute, but let's look at the news coming out. We've got for Monday, ISM manufacturing US dollar, Australia cash rate expected to stay the same at 0.75% on Monday. Tuesday, New Zealand gonna be in the afternoon for the United States. Employment change and unemployment rate at 4.2%. Remember what I told you, the U.S. unemployment rate stands at 3.5%, 3.5. And we have some countries at 5, 7, 14. Unemployment rate for New Zealand expected to stay the same at 4.2%. Australian governor, Royal Bank of Australia is going to speak on Wednesday. We have Euro speaking and then ADP non-farm employment change for the US dollar and expected to drop in jobs. We have a previous 202 forecast on 150,000. Remember what I said, of course we're gonna drop because a lot of layoffs happen in January because of the buying holiday season for October, November, December. They do a lot of hiring for the retail industry. So we get a big increase in jobs and then January comes and they lay all of those seasonal temporary workers off. So January is going to have a drop in jobs and probably an increase, maybe a slight 3.6 increase in the unemployment rate. We also have US ISM non-manufacturing expected to bump just a 0.1. Australia, uh, retail sales and trade balance, that'll probably do something for Australia on Wednesday. Then we have Thursday, just some speakers, monetary policy statement, nothing major. But Friday is what we're looking for. It's going to be NFP, non-farm payroll for the United States and for Canada, employment change, unemployment rate, and average hourly earnings month over month for the United States. So again, we're expecting a drop. It says 3.5% right here, maybe bump to 3.6. They're expecting 160,000 jobs added. Mm, that's going to be something I would venture to say that it's not going to be that much. And it might even be a negative, okay? On the breaking news, headline news, we know that uh, the coronavirus is a big deal that they are trying to wag the dog with, in my opinion. They are basically uh, smoke screening everyone, saying, while they're doing over this, trying to crush the protests in Hong Kong, and they're trying to deal with, you got all these countries where there are people, Venezuela and Iran and Hong Kong, these people are rising up protesting the corruption 
and the dictatorships of their governments, the oppression that they're dealing with in the, the communist, socialist communist countries. And so what are they going to do? They're going to create something to try to get people distracted and their news media, their lapdog, uh, corrupt, lying, deceiving propaganda news media is going to say whatever they're told to say, and they're going to spread it like wildfire. These people are liars. They are crooks. Do not believe the mainstream media. They are no better than the Chinese run state media. Okay. They're going to tell you whatever they want you to hear. And it's nine times out of 10 garbage. So don't believe this. I believe it's a, just a phony baloney. It's been around for whatever. I believe they make up these diseases and things and they spread it. And then probably, well, even who, do, who knows what to believe as far as what is coming out of their, their uh, media reports saying that so many X number of people died. Might have been five, may have been 20. Who knows? They could have killed them. No telling. But they kill the people in their own protests and they're going to say, oh, we need to be worried about this virus. Man, you're out there killing your protesters, people that are trying to get you to stop the corrupt actions against your people. And you want us to be worried about a virus? My gosh, more likely to be killed by your government and their actions. So here we are in the US and we've got a party, the Democrat party that is pushing for socialism and communism. That's basically what it is, statism, communism, uh, whatever you wanna call it, Democrat socialism, it's all, it's all for the elite to stay in power and in control and to cover up their crimes of massive money laundering and pedophilia, sex trafficking. Friend, it's going to bust wide open. They've been calling us cons conspiracy theorists for years. And look at what happened. Jeffrey Epstein case blown wide open saying, oh, that's not really going on. The heck it ain't. It's been happening right under our noses and people have been talking about it, but nobody wants to, to own up, to fess up. They just want to believe these politicians in the media and they're liars. All right. So what we have to do is stay vigilant and really stay woke. They got people saying, oh, I'm woke. And they ain't even woke. They don't even know. They still believe the media and they talk about their woke. Come on. You want to be vigilant, pay attention. Think what they say with your third eye, your pineal gland. You want to look that up. You want to know what that is and make sure that you understand what is really going on to trade and to make money like the wealthy do. You got to understand social, economic, and political situations and the deception that they push on mankind. All right, so the Dow plummeted 600 points in worst day since August as coronavirus fear. No, that's not what's happening. It is, a, it is a bubble that is bursting. It's nothing about the coronavirus. It is technical analysis that they are setting everybody up. It's been boom, 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 blowing, blowing. I've been saying it for months that the end was coming. And we're gonna look at it here in a second. You're gonna see, I even post a video on my YouTube channel Facebook and multiple places showing that the US 30 bubble was about to burst. I called it in our channel, our private channel. I said that the Dow is likely to push up one more time to 28. I think, think I said 900 and then it's going to plummet. And what did it do? Went up to 28, 900 and then bottom fell out. And then it bounced back up to 28, 904, 940, give or take. And then the bottom fell out. And we in we got a low of 28, 100 and something like 800 pip drop off just on Friday and then back up just a tad. So we're going to take a look at that. Let's see what else is going on. As you know, also, or if you don't know, the Senate denied the impeachment. They acquitted the president on this sham impeachment. It is a sham. If you don't believe it, well, you've been misled. You've been duped. You have the wool pulled over your eyes because if you did not go and watch the house with an open eye when they did the impeachment proceedings, it was one-sided. It was all along party lines, political partisanship at its finest. These crooks, they want to cover up their crimes, and yet they're trying to say that Trump and the Republicans are trying to cover up their, no, friend, you can see if you really pay attention and open your eyes. Now, I'm not saying the Republicans are perfect because they're not you got plenty of crooks in the Republican Party and they needed to be dealt with as well and they should go to jail. All of these people that are involved in money laundering, crooked schemes for decades, they need to go to jail. I don't care what party they are for. They need to be walking and leading and operating with integrity and honesty. And if they're not, 
get them out of here, put them behind bars. That's what I say. All right, Bloomberg says he will pay more, unveils $5 trillion tax plan targeting the wealthy, and that he will pay more. You know, that's what's so funny. These hypocrites and these people that are so wealthy, even Bernie Sanders, saying they need to pay more. Why don't you start? Why don't you voluntarily pay more and do what it's what you're claiming that everybody else should be doing? And they're not going to because they're doggone hypocrites. Bottom line. It's all about taxing the people and creating a much bigger gap between the wealthy and the poor and really crushing the middle class. So I think that's about it. I'm going to share on these headlines. The British pound, I call it a bottom here. Uh, looks like a double bottom right here. I said we got a nice flag pattern. We bumped up very hard. So I was saying we could come to the point where we break out. Man, we flew up. And anybody that got in on a buy, they made it. Anybody that got in on sell got crushed. And that was one of the signals calling the buys to go straight up. So if anybody paid attention to that, they would have made a lot of money. Been calling that for a couple of weeks, actually. But we still stand to rally some more. Let's see, five years. Okay, so the British pound still stands to rally some more and push all the way up here. We're about to find out. If it comes up here to 142.90 double top sell, boom, going to come right back down and rest on this support around 133.30, uh, 133, give or take, uh, on a double or triple bottom. This is resistance at the moment. Bust through it. It's going to come back and rest on it. It's a general basic elementary trading strategy. That's the British pound. So that's what we're going to be seeing in about 40 minutes, whenever the market's open, where that's going to be headed. Let's look at Dixie and see what we've got going on here. And who do we have on the channel? Let me see. Welcome to everybody that is on our call. Owen, welcome, my brother. Always great to see you on here. Carol, welcome. Christian. Christian, welcome for the first time. And Dwayne, welcome. Jenny, Michael, and Owen, welcome to all of you. Thank you for being on here as we continue to grow and make uh, impact on people's lives. We had one gentleman that made a trade signal on our call. Uh, Salim made $2,200, I believe, on Friday. But I'm, I'll be posting that report here in a little while. But you can make a lot of money. He made one, one year's worth of membership covered. And if he would get two, uh, three people involved, if he would refer three people, then his membership would be comped going forward as long as he has three paying members. That's how it works. We help you out. Three and free. Okay. U.S. dollar had a nosedive. I said we were at the top. We were going to come down. Sure enough, it fell straight down. Boom. Where are we going? Well, Probably going to keep going down, come all the way down. We may double bottom here. We're going to come way down here, go further. If we don't double bottom there, we're going to double bottom here from this point right there. And this point, almost like a triple. But we're going to see how that plays out. That is the U.S. dollar still coming down. British pound still going up. We may get a change. Start of a new month. So we're going to see some interesting things take place. Be ready and be watchful for that. Let's see. One more I'm going to look at, and that is Australia. What's going on with Australia? All right, so Australia broke its low right here. I'm going to go out to the five-year time frame. And we're going to look and we see we broke major lows over here and over there. And we are continuing to fall. So Australia is in a free fall at the moment. But it is right near a lower channel. So we may get a bounce. This could be what's called a bear trap that they're sucking people in and that it's actually getting ready to bounce. So I'd be looking for a buy on Australia. A lot of people say, well, that's crazy. Why would you be in a buy? Well, I've been watching this for over 20 years and seeing the trends and the way things work. And I get into buys when everybody else is in a sell. I get in a sell when everybody else is going into a buy. I play the reversals. That's just the, the way I trade. I look for these big reversals and that we're going to have a big pop. So we broke that down channel trend line right here. Then we fell. This could be a major stop hunt. And now we're getting ready to come way back up here. We're just just uh, speculating at the moment, but that's the probability that I would be going with. All right, let's go ahead and dive right into the charts and let's see what we got going on here. So I'm gonna look at British pound versus the New Zealand 
Kiwi. Now we rallied, look at this. Last week we rallied hard, straight up, big move. So what I'm expecting is because of Brexit, we're probably gonna get a big bump up. I don't know where it's gonna end and then it's gonna sell off like what we did right here. Big bump and sell. So the opening of the new weekly candle and the new monthly candle, take a look at this. You see how we had here, uh, the new month candle is gonna form. So I'm expecting a, a push up and then a drop. We don't know. We got to see how this plays out because it was big news with Brexit. So I want to see what the gap is going to be up or down, how big it's going to be. And we're going to be setting up for the reversal. In my opinion, if it gaps way up, it'll run a little bit, maybe 50 or so, 100 more points, don't know. And then it will plummet. I expect it to if it goes up. All right. So I'm thinking that we are near the peak. Just got to see how that's going to play out with all British pound pairs. Let's go ahead and take a look at gold. All right, so gold was rallying, and I actually called it a bull on the channel during the week. I said if it comes back, it'd come back to like 1470. I'm sorry, 1570. Well, it came back to 1570, bumped up, and then it fell all the way through to 1564 area. So it came down a little bit more than I expected, and then it rallied, pulled back, and rallied again. Broke this peak over here. Let's see where we're at on the monthly. We've got a new month candle, so this is going to be a very interesting week. I'll save all of my major analysis for when we do our private shows in our chat room. You want to know about that and hear what we have to say, well, then you want to join globaltradingarmy.com. We've got $167 for our ultimate package, or you can get a discount if you're in a developing nation or a student. If you're a student, you get up to 50% off almost 50% off on our packages. So that's like $84 per month, phenomenal deal. Friend, I paid over $30,000 for a professional education and it will take you 50 years, okay, to get to that point. Now, everything is, is hinged on this move with Brexit, where the markets are gonna open up, how they're responding, what happened during the dark pools over the weekend what shady tradey deals went on behind the scenes. Don't know. So I'm looking forward to see how that's going to pan out. But gold is still expected to run way up here, 18, 1900. We may get a pullback to start the new month. If we pull all the way back to 1550, 1540, man, I'm looking for a buy. I would love to see it come. The further down it comes, the greater the buying opportunity. So be looking for that. Take your time. Let's wait for a confirmation and then we'll get in. All right. U30 index. Again, we got a new month forming. So I'm, I'm expecting a gap down possibly, and then a bump up and then a drop off. If we bump up, then I expect a full sell off. I, I really don't see us gapping up from where we're at, but it could, I think we're gonna gap down and then fall. Maybe one slight bump up on open gap down open. Now this won't open until an hour after. So in about an hour and a half, this and gold won't open until then. But again, here we are at a major peak. Since 2002, we've rallied all the way up. I mean, this is huge. And this is trying to clean everybody's clock coming up here. Well, a lot of shaking going on and we pushed all the way up here 29,400. Now we should come all the way back down here. I think we could come all the way down to 14,000 maybe even 13,000. I mean, mighty will be the fall. Woo! How big is this bubble? It is huge. Huge! So y'all be ready. Here's the weekly time frame. So normally when we have a breakdown, boom, 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 we have like two weeks. So I think we could come all the way down here right now before we get our first bounce. We could come all the way to about, I'm going to say 26,000, two or 300. So that's going to be another 2,000 pips straight down this week is what I'm expecting. This could be the big week that we get that. And as we come down, we may bounce back and then break. But it's going to be a lot of chopping back and forth. I don't know if it's going to be a straight drop like we did here. Drop, drop, drop. But just be careful. Play it safe. And what you could do is the way you could play it, when it comes down here, you put in a buy order. You keep your sell order and you put in a buy order just in case it keeps falling. Okay, don't close out your sell. You keep your buy order, it's called a hedge trade. And then when it runs up, 
Yeah, you're giving up profit on the sell, but it's protecting you in case the bottom falls out. And then when it looks like the, the peak has hit again, you close out the buy and you add another sell and then it'll come down. So you're still in your original sell and then you're in your secondary sell. And then when it comes down further, boom, bada, bing, big bucks, big bucks, no whammies. We're going to get them. All right. We know Bitcoin has been rallying, pushing up, looking real good. This is on the weekly time frame. 9341 at the moment, it's kind of, it's doing this waves, boom, boom, boom. And it's getting ready to settle in and start slowing down and then getting into a groove of where it's going to go. So this could come up to about 11,400 and then back down to about 8,000. And then it's going to slowly wave and then get into a groove. Okay. That's what we're expecting. That's normally how it works. Now I said US dollar was going to fall and sure enough, it did. Let's look at the daily time frame drop way off. US dollar, everything is looking real good for a continuation drop off. Let's see how the new month. Yep. So we're going to open a month. We might get a little bump up or we just hold steady. I mean, very slight bump up. And then we're going to come all the way down to 104. I would, I'm sorry, 106 maybe on the US dollar against the Japanese yen. That's what I'm looking for on that. Uh, UCAD, new month is coming. So I've said that I'm expecting this new monthly candle is probably going to gap down, bump up just a little bit, make a little wick on the top. And then we're going to fall all the way back down on UCAD. We could see 130. So that's good for about two, 300 pips if we keep dropping. So that's UCAD. US dollar expected to come down in this uh, next month, okay? February. All right, do we have any pairs that you would like me to analyze anybody on our members chat room? Uh, let me know right now if you've got anything you would like me to see. And I will do that. I'll do about uh, two pairs. And if anybody out there in Facebook world wants to see something, just type it there in the comment section and my admins will let me know what you have. And we will go from there. Once again, welcome to everybody. All right, don't be bashful. I'm gonna give you about two minutes. If I don't hear anything, we're wrapping it up. Because we got just about under two hours before our Super Bowl festivities begin. So Owen wants you to look at Odd Chef, please, A-U-D-C-H-F. Odd Chef. Owen, what do you think? Odd Chef is going to do. You tell me, up or down? And let's see if you're right. Up. Up, up, up. What is you? He says up. up. All right. So always start from the, the eagle's eye view monthly, and then you work your way down and it will determine where you're headed. Okay, so this is a monthly time frame since 1995, way back here. So we see we've broken major lows, okay? So RSI right now is at 33.37 on the month, but what do I see right off the bat? Man, 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 a good one, okay? So I got a price action right here and a lower price action right there. Then when I come over here and I've got an RSI of this automatic converging lines, price action to strength index tells me that we're likely to have a reversal very soon. Now, Odd Chef is one of those turtle movers, not very big of a mover, but if you were to take a high probability trade, like I said, on the Australia currency index, then we would be looking for a reversal pretty soon. So you just want to start to uh, phase in. We're at 64.31. You know, where would be a general expectation that this will go and bounce off of? Can you tell me? Real quick, type in the chat box. Where do you think? If I'm looking at this and I see 64.31. Hmm, what would be my most obvious bounce point? Come on, real quick. You only got to type two, two digits. Give you a big hand. 
Anybody? Come on, talk to me. Five, four, three, two, one. 64, whole number, round number, whole point, 6400. Zero, zero. That would be the most obvious expectation. Come on. You guys got to know this right off the bat. Okay, whenever you're, you've been with me long enough, many of you have been with me long enough that you know exactly what I say. Major whole numbers, century marks, round numbers, you're going to be looking for those as a bounce point. Now, they are likely to go a little bit be below that or right above it. They stop short or they'll take it below it to 63, 85, 87 area, maybe even 80 area, 78. Oh, excuse me. Hold on one second. Take that just a little bit down because everybody and their grandma is going to be thinking we're going to bounce right up 64. So let's get in there. Got all our orders there. Well, their stop loss might be at 60. 380, 63, 70, if they're like most people, 30 pip standard stop loss, which is garbage. What you need to do is put your stop loss where your, your chart is telling you to beyond the previous swing points. Okay? Not 30 pips. That's, that's uh, anyway, teach you more about that in, in classes. All right. So that's where I'd be expecting that to bounce. Let's look at the weekly. Oh, yeah. Weekly is... 27 on the RSI, nice long drop. So I may, we may even get a gap up, pull back, and then rally, or a gap down and then straight up. Wherever it, wherever it starts, I would be starting to scale in. Okay. I'd be scaling in. Might even be looking at that. How far up is it going to go? Well, you see, this is a day time frame. It could take two to three weeks to come all the way back up here to 67. 50, that'd be, that'd be 300 pips, but it'd be a, a safe play. Very conservative. Okay, RSI 20. Wow. 20 on the RSI daily. Nice drop off going on here. And 22 on the RSI on the four hour time frame dealer chart. I'd be looking for, and, and here's what I, sh what I show you. When you have consolidation, and then a drop-off. It'll start speeding up and you get longer bars. All right, then we had your bounce. This got under all the moving averages, started falling, falling, boom, 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 holding. Then we got a big drop, a bounce, big drop, bounce, big drop. This is capitulation. It's when it starts speeding up and the bounces are smaller, speeding up to the end. And then when you start getting RSI down in these areas, that's when you know a bounce is coming. So we've fallen off 300 pips, I totally expect that. All right, next. Anybody else got anything else in our chat room or on Facebook? Let us know. Nothing yet in Facebook and in this chat room, nothing yet too. All right. All right, so the market's going to open in about 23 minutes, give or take. So be ready for that. We're going to have some fireworks waiting to see what that British pound is going to do and how we are going to respond. Be posting that in our channels. So you guys have an awesome rest of your weekend. Have fun watching the Super Bowl. If you watch the Super Bowl, if not, whatever you do, enjoy your time. And we will see you in our classes and on our sessions. God bless you guys. Have a great rest of your week. Talk to you soon. Who's your team? Who do you think is going to win? I already said it. Kansas City. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>